Hi lovely, so I'm back with another reaction video today and I'm going to be reacting to the full story of K-Flock documentary. I am, I've heard of K-Flock, I've seen K-Flock before but I don't know much about him at all. I've had a few people ask me to react to this documentary so hopefully it'll give me a backstory, let me know more about him and then I can also go on and react to some more stuff of his as well. But before I jump into this, make sure you jump over to my Instagram and follow me over there. A huge thank you for the love, the support. Thank you just for everything. I'm very happy and grateful. I've been getting a lot of love lately, so thank you so much for that. Also, make sure you follow me so you're kept in a loop, so you know when I'm dropping new reaction videos and all of that good stuff because... I try and keep you in the loop so make sure you jump over there also in the comments let me know what you'd like me to react to next as well but yes k flock anything i need to know about k flock let me know in the comments let me know some things you might want me to react to of his um anything put it in the comments i'll be there i'll check them but anyways guys thank you for watching and i'm going to jump straight into it 432 days have passed since K-Flock surrendered himself to detectives for a murder that happened on December 16, 2021. Okay. While walking with his sister and her friend down 151st in Amsterdam, he crossed paths with another gang member who spotted him from inside of a barber shop. Words were exchanged and just moments later, the man who was identified as Oscar Hernandez died from bullets to the neck and chest. After 911 calls came pouring in, investigators quickly identified K-Flock in his $4,000 outfit as the main suspect. Okay. They then issued a warrant for his arrest on first degree murder charges on December 23rd. And without question, he self-admitted. He was only 18 years old at the time. Three days later, his lawyer would release a statement claiming the shooting was done in self-defense. Somebody walked out to confront him. It's all on video. When the guy hits the ground, he's got a loaded gun that was in his pocket that his hand was on at the time. We consider that to be self-defense. The surveillance footage that was released seemed to strongly back this up, seeing that he was the one who was approached and then threatened. Now, those court date would continuously be delayed the entire 2022 year. It was likely he was going to beat the case and be released within a matter of time. But the feds had other plans, and they want anything but to see K-Flock back on the streets of the Bronx. On February 23rd, 2023, the federal government stormed in and added a 15-page indictment on K-Flock and seven others. Now being labeled the leader of an organized crime syndicate, the New York federal court is demanding that the 19-year-old rapper serve a minimum of life in prison Ooh. or a maximum of the death penalty. A suspect wanted in a deadly shooting in Harlem. The incident took place yesterday morning on That B, okay. Jeez. Before he was ever known as K-Flock, he was just Kevin Perez, born April 20th, <laughs> 2003 in the Bronx, New York. Although the Bronx is the birthplace of hip-hop music, 40% of the borough lives below the poverty line, making it a hub for crime and gang activity. Unfortunately, he was no exception to that growing up in this environment. His mom says he tried to play sports, boxing, and was also into fashion, but she never expected him to become a rapper. He wanted to actually do clothing designs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I had him in boxing because that's what we do. Things like that, but never nothing of music, ever. The school never interested him either. He already had an early mindset of getting out on the streets, and he did so with the hustle of someone twice his age. At just 10 years old, he had already been outside hanging on the block. K-Flock took note of what other rappers were doing at the time in Chicago. Because while he was growing up in the Bronx, the Chicago drill scene was starting to take over. Mm -hmm. Although young, in his mind, he was old enough to start hustling and meeting new people in the neighborhood. Even though K-Flock was good at making enemies, he was even better at making friends. Aaron Howard, or Dougie B, is actually his blood cousin, but the two grew up like good friends. Then there was Quayshawn, or B-Love as we know him. He was the oldest and had a lot of influence over them, including being the first one to pick up rapping. And lastly, there was also Jalen, known as PMVJ, who at one point was their friend. Needless to say, B-Love had already been in the streets and he had some connections and was already making a name for himself. 
To them, the streets were too much fun. This was our mindset at a young age. Being young and not fully understanding the lifestyle that came with it, losing family and friends was part of growing up in the Bronx. Being from 187th Street, KFLOCK repped a gang called Sevside and DOA. And like any set, they were at war with a few others. Sometimes they even referred to themselves as EBK or everybody killers. How EBK? Because anybody could get shot. So you can imagine they had a lot of enemies, with the Damn. YGs and OGs being the main ops of Sevside. As I mentioned, B-Love was the first one to start recording music, but he didn't like the way his songs were coming out, so he ended up giving it up for a while and never released the songs. Meanwhile, PMBJ would actually be the first one to find some success with songs like OMBK. Seeing that PMVJ could get views like that only made them realize they could do it as well, seeing they all come from the same area. Shortly after, B-Love ended up doing some time behind bars, later claiming that someone had snitched on him. This made him hate the street politics, wanting to pursue music more so he could leave that behind. But while this was happening, k Flock was running his ops down in the streets and would even go live on Instagram, showing him the hoods he wasn't supposed to be in like he was bulletproof. Sorry. What I was going to say before I was choking was, you know, I've noticed reacting to like these documentaries about people, a lot of these rappers or, you know, whoever in general, they love to go on Instagram live and Twitter and show things that they shouldn't be showing or say things that they shouldn't be saying. I've noticed that a lot in recent, like, not even recent times, like, I've noticed it a lot. Um... Yeah. Live like on Instagram, thing. showing him in hoods he wasn't supposed to be in, like he was bulletproof. I make it know when I'm on his side. No, can't more your boys down there. Boys still down there. Boys still down there. Although negative, this attention would actually put his name out there, so his reputation was quickly building. In just a few months, Flocka had made a few hundred fans that would watch his streams where he taunted his enemies. The idea of making music still wasn't on his mind, though. The streets okay. had his full attention. I'm not, I wasn't really the rapper, I wasn't really the rapper right here. <laughs> However, the atmosphere of New York's music scene was quickly changing. Before this, auto-tune melodic rappers like A Boogie and Lil TJ had been setting the tone. But 2018 saw the rise of Brooklyn drill rappers who began mm -hmm. using UK drill beats, giving a whole mm -hmm. new sound that quickly took over the city. New drill rappers were popping up all over Brooklyn, while the Bronx was struggling to get anywhere close to that kind of recognition. But that was about to change. In 2019, B-Love came home from his sentence, and upon his return, Dougie B convinced him and K-Flock to start rapping seriously. But things were only getting more complicated in the streets. At this point, their friend PMVJ started repping a new set, and Dougie B and others were upset about that. What is your reason why you don't like me? Why, bro? You used to stay with me. I just can't get you all that. Tell me why you don't like me, bro. I don't care about you. One day, PMVJ was back in Sevside visiting his family when Dougie B and a friend pulled up, allegedly asking PMVJ's mom if he was home. She, unknowing of the beef, told them that he was upstairs if they wanted to hang out. This would ultimately lead up to Dougie B taking the chain off of his neck and recording the entire incident. K Flock, of course, would side with Dougie B, and the rest was history. Because of this, though, Dougie B would actually spend some time in jail for the robbery. With Dougie gone, B Love and K Flock were still in the streets looking for a way out. But for an undisclosed reason due to being a minor, K Flock was then also put into a juvenile detention center for a short period of time. Okay. With B Love the only one still holding on to his freedom, he began freestyling over drill beats until K Flock came home. When Flocka was released, B-Love sat him down and told him he should really give rapping his full attention. And within time, he booked a studio session for him where he recorded his first track. On May 26, 2020, k Flock dropped that song, which was titled FTO, a remix to 22G's Blicky Freestyle. I've never heard The song amassed over 100,000 views due to the okay. hype k Flock had already been building in the streets. And now everyone wanted to hear him rap. 22G's even ended up- I've never heard it, so in the comments, let me know if you'd like me to react to it. Um, It'd be- first time reaction because i don't think i've heard it unless i've been scrolling on like instagram or something or and i've heard a little snippet but yeah let me know in the comments giving him props for the remix a huge success for his first song one month went by and b-love dropped his first official song as well no hook which also saw about the same success they now had a platform to grow off of and put the bronx drill movement on the map dropping music at least once a month and collabing on many of them their names were quickly becoming the talk of the city 
They also made sure to shout out Dougie B in verses while he was still locked away. So his past music was also getting recognized and gave him okay. a small buzz for when he got out. But with all the attention they were now getting, it was also putting an even larger target on their backs. Every song became more specific, targeting different ops. But this is also what right. made it so popular in the first place. They made it a point to help each other stay on track, and no matter what was happening in the streets, they had to keep recording music if they were going to make it out. Dougie B was released around August of 2020, and when he saw the momentum B-Love and K-Flock had built up, he quickly rejoined the mix. This is when things would really start to take off. Kind of like a trio, except they all had their own individual careers. Yeah, I was going to say that, In yeah. March of 2021, the three of them dropped their song, Brotherly Love. The first month it was out, it got over a million views and really put them on the map. Dang. I feel like the famous rival <laughs> People from outside the city were now tuning in, and their fan base grew a lot after this. A big reason the music was catching on was because they didn't just copy the drill sound that Brooklyn was seeing success with, but rather they put their own twist on it, making it an entirely new sound. And although other Bronx rappers were getting views too, it was really these three who took it to that next level. From here forward, their songs were easily gathering millions of views every time. But make no mistake, they were still in the middle of a war. Things between Sepside, the YGs, and OGs was heating up, and the music was only adding fuel to the fire for all sides. Unlike most gangs that you've heard about in the past, the ones doing the most damage here in the Bronx were actually kids from the ages of 12 to 18. Uh -uh. These kids are younger and wilder than anything you could Listen, imagine. Listen, that's what people be saying, you know, like people nowadays be saying the kids are like the younger people nowadays are just wilder who are in gangs and stuff like that. They're just wilder. Um, there's just a lot more stuff going on. Like, I've heard that so many times, like, recently. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Do you think kids, not just, you know, kids, younger people nowadays who are in gangs or, you know, are about, like, the street life, like, do you feel like they are more wilder than um, the, the, the older people, you know? Let me know what you think in the comments. Ages of 12 to 18. These kids are younger and wilder than anything you could imagine, and they're pulling triggers. During this time, K-Flock was having beef with his own cousin and rapper D-Thing, just because he was repping a different set, and that just shows how serious they took it. It's no more free Dougie D, but it's gonna be a R -R -P. Ah. Then there was another situation with rapper E-Dot, who at one point was friends with K as well. After an Instagram live showed Eat Out smoking and chilling with K-Flock's ops, their friendship was over as well. 16 with 2 million views. They never do that before. All my ops, 18, 19, 20, 21. I be for old, great, old, nah, they not even my ops. I'm smacked. I'm high, y'all. Love that. They not my ops. Fans. Fans. At this mm -hmm. point, it seemed like everybody had a problem with everybody. But again, every single one of them was benefiting from these beefs. Bronx Drill had everybody tuned in, but at what cost? In July, a 21-year-old rapper named Ty Swish was shot in the head while outside of his apartment complex. Two days later, a 13-year-old named Jarian was chased down and shot outside of a cafe in Belmont. And Joe, it was a shooting. 13-year-old named Jarian was shot in the head while outside of his apartment complex. Two days later, a 13-year-old named Jarian was chased down and shot outside of a cafe in Belmont. And Joe, it was a shooting that left a 13-year-old dead and parents of teenagers here horrified that someone could do this. The NYPD tonight is asking for anyone with information no. to help them find the killer. It's not confirmed, but it's rumored that this was probably retaliation for Ty Swish's death from just a few days before. On July 11th, another 16-year-old rapper named Rod G's was getting into an Uber headed to a studio session. Two kids on scooters rolled up from behind him and shot him. Rod G's had been mocking the death of Jarian on social media just an hour before. Around 11.30 Sunday night by the corner of East 178th Street and Webster Avenue in the Bronx, police say two men pulled scooters up next to a cab Medrano was taking to a recording studio oh and then shot him in his head and chest, killing him. A perpetual cycle of dissing and then death was happening. But while this war was brewing between everyone, K-Flock, Dougie B, and B-Love were on the brink of going mainstream. Something they had been risking their lives for in an attempt to make it out was finally about to pay off. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Shortly after, K Flock dropped his song Being Honest, and he would get his first collab from a mainstream artist when G Herbo gave him a verse. Following suit, Lil TJ and 504 would also collab with him on the song In The Mood. Okay. Now he was getting radio play on Hot 97, and together with B-Love, he walked onto his first major show at Rolling okay. Loud. K-Flock, B-Love, and Dougie B would all sign record deals shortly after, with okay. K-Flock's rumor to have been worth a few million dollars. Now they had the money and freedom they had been working hard for, but it's a double-edged sword. The dissing and gang lifestyle was partially the reason they became so popular, so it's hard to just leave that behind at this point. But with money in his pockets, he was seen enjoying the finer things in life. Taking trips to Miami, riding around in a new BMW, and spoiling his little sister and girlfriend with shopping trips. But the money and fame only made him an even larger target for his ops, which means he mm. now had to think twice before doing anything in his home city. And you better believe they were watching his every move. The morning of December 16th, k Flock woke up and was seen on live, once again taunting his enemies to come find him. But he made sure to let him know he wasn't lacking as he revealed a gun tucked in his belt. See? They literally just be showing stuff, like... But he made sure to let him know he wasn't lacking as he revealed a gun tucked in his belt. Hours later, he was walking down Amsterdam Avenue and 151st Street. A shiesty covered most of his face. But a $1,500 Montclair jacket, unreleased Air Jordans, and a $1,400 pair of Amiri jeans may have still gave his identity away. As he passed by a barber shop, surveillance shows Oscar Hernandez come storming out to confront K Flock. Although he walks out of sight of the cameras for a second, we can assume threats were being made on both ends. After Oscar turned his back to walk away, K Flock pulled the gun from under his jacket and shot him twice in the neck and back. Oscar would die later in the hospital while K Flock quickly fled the scene. Oscar Hernandez was inside a barbershop when the gunman opened the door and asked him, quote, what are you looking at? And the victim went outside to confront him. He was fatally struck in the neck and the back. Because he was so easy to identify and investigators had access to surveillance from multiple angles, a warrant was issued only six days later. But the police wouldn't need to look for him. On December 23rd, Kay hired a well-known lawyer named Scott Lehman to represent him. They drove together to the 30th precinct where he surrendered himself. Go back a little bit. Let's take this in. And his lawyer describes that police had received a tip that K-Flock wasn't actually the shooter in the surveillance footage, but that was quickly shut down. He was denied bond and waited behind bars while more evidence was collected by the police. Then in March, out of nowhere, K would fire his old lawyer and hire the same lawyer who represented El Chapo, a promising sign. Okay. In this Instagram post, his new lawyer stated that he was excited to work with K-Flock and was confident he would beat this trial. So he did take he did shoot him in self-defense. That's what the allegation is. You know, I don't want to talk too much about the details of the case. Okay. The government claims that he pulled the gun out and shot him. But at the same time, the person that was dead on the ground had his hand on a loaded weapon, illegal loaded weapon. k Flock then posted several updated photos with the caption reading, all good, don't believe the blogs or internet. Everything trendy, forever DOA. Over the summer of 2022, his attorney began to argue self-defense, claiming Kay had no intentions or premeditation to murder Oscar, but instead feared for his life. After all, he was in a dangerous part of town, and he was the one who was confronted in the situation. Social media had been supporting Free Kay Flock, and many believed him to be released sooner than later, mm. but his court appearances were being postponed one after another. In November of 2022, fans tuning in would explode when the courts made an error showing his next court date to take place in December of 2028, leaving many to wonder if this was a mistake. But shortly after, the next court appearance was updated and corrected, this time set for November 16th, but even that would be delayed once again. The only update the world would get was a recorded phone call of K-Flock dropping bars saying he felt confident he would be home in 2023. No, 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 no. His next appearance was set for February 2023, and those tuned into the drill scene were patiently awaiting for the return of the Bronx's biggest drill artist. Instead, what fans and K-Flock would get would be a wake-up call that no one could see coming. Early on the morning of February 23rd, before Kay was set to appear in court, the federal government would release a 15-page indictment on him and seven others of the gang's set side under the Racketeering Influence and Corrupt Organization Act, or RICO charges. And these are very serious accusations. 
normally the evidence behind RICO charges go back many years. Mm -hmm. But in K Flock and Sevside's case, it was only two years worth of evidence, leaving many to believe this was rushed and a desperate attempt to keep K Flock away and locked up. Regardless, the government had gathered enough evidence against him and his entire gang. Wanting to make an example out of all of them due to New York having some of the strictest sentencing and an image to uphold. Okay. New York wasn't taking a liking to the image that K-Flock and his music were giving the city. After all, this is the home of the stock exchange and some of the wealthiest people in the country. The last thing they want is kids glorifying murders in their city. New York City, they're not waiting for that. You're not going to make okay. the city where e-commerce and the stock market lives look like a crime infested haven to the rest of the world and when you're now a rapper and you're going on live to say hey i have a gun and i'm chasing it down you're not gonna do it in new york city you can do this in chicago you can do this in houston you can do this in miami you will never in life do this in new york city now it suddenly made sense why k fox court date was being delayed what most initially thought would be no more than a few years quickly turned into a minimum life sentence wow. with the maximum being the death penalty Neither Kay or his defense have responded as of now. Only a few recent photos of prison where Kay is seen here. Police are now gathering all seven indicted members and Kay Flock's life hangs in the middle. He wanted to be the one who made the change for everyone around him, but at just 19 years old, he may have already lost the chance of being a free man. Yeah, that's what my whole hood to do. I want to be the nigga that make the change for everybody. Yeah, that is... Yeah, that is... Okay. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. I learned a lot in that video. Like I said, I have seen him before, but I haven't, like, heard any of his music. I don't really know much about him, but that whole video, I learned everything. That Like, everything I needed to know, I feel like was in that video. I don't know if, they, if he missed some stuff out. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, but... Yeah, definitely. That was an interesting documentary like a damn netflix doc like a damn netflix documentary these documentaries on youtube are coming like doc netflix documentaries okay really like, i'm honestly being truthful but yeah let me know what you think about this in the comments let me know if you'd like me to react to anything else uh, to do with k flock or if there's any other video in general you'd like me to react to but yeah let me know what you think about this in the comments very eye-opening but anyways guys thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next video very very soon bye